This is going to be a quick video about my Juki industrial sewing machine. This is the model DDL5550 as you can see right here on the side plate. Let's talk a little bit about buying sewing machines second hand. Um, prices have been going up that's why I haven't been making quite as many videos lately. Uh, it seems like everybody that has an old machine on the used market wants a highly inflated price for it but fortunately I came across this one which was reasonably priced probably because it's not a walking foot machine it's just a standard industrial sewing machine for tailoring and basic uh, light work you can sew so um, jeans and denim on this machine without a problem and it is rated as an industrial machine it has reverse uh, we'll talk about a little bit about the needle system which I've got sitting over on the right hand side of the table here and I've just got this set up today on my workbench just got done cleaning and tuning it up and um, if I have time I will briefly go over the table that's out in the garage that I'll be putting this machine on probably tomorrow so let's dive into the needle system and the uh, bobbins that you use with this machine and then anything else I can think of along the way, I'll bring that up too. So let's get into it. I've got the needle system lined up here on the table as you can see. This is the model. Let's say the model of the needle that you need because the sizes vary here. Uh, the model is a DBX1 16 by 231. This is uh, the same size needle as uh, that's used in my old Singer 241-12 and it's probably the same as in the 8500 and 8700 and what we have here is just different diameter needles you have the 11, 12, 14 and 16 16 is what you want to use on denim and then as your fabric gets lighter you can just keep going down on a standard domestic sewing machine that's just going to sew clothing I would use a 14 and then on very light fabrics I would use an 11 these all, all of these needles will fit in the Juki DDL5550 industrial sewing machine. It's just these are all different diameters. Smaller, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. It's just a heavier duty shank on the needle. So let's take a look at the bobbin system. As you can see here on the bed of the sewing machine, I have a few of the bobbins laid out for you to take a look at. They come in a solid or uh, the ones here with the holes in them and it is uh, the DDL5550 Juki sewing machine does take the same bobbin as the 8300, 8700 and the 9000 series. A 10 pack of these is going to cost you approximately $10 plus shipping depending on where you get them. If you have this machine, pick it up second hand, doesn't have any bobbins or you need to get more just google it sewing parts online carries them and I'm sure other places do too and then this is your bobbin case and as you can see right here on the side it does have these screws so you can well, I should say screw no it has two screws uh, the one to the right is just to hold this spring steel in and the, this one here to the left this is the one you will turn clockwise to tighten your lower thread tension and turn counterclockwise to loosen the lower thread tension. It's important that you uh, balance the upper and lower thread tension to create a good stitch. I've got the machine all threaded up and I just have two layers of denim here. I'm going to go ahead and sew that. It's just a size 16 needle. I've got this set up on my test bench and um, let's just see how it does. No problem whatsoever. Size 16 needle and has reverse so you can back pack your stitches. I'm just going to quickly turn around here. Nice quiet running machine. If you, did, if you do a lot of work with denim and heavier materials and you don't feel that you need a walking foot and you want to save some money I would definitely go with uh, uh, 
this this type of a machine all right as you know this gets kind of addictive so let's take a look at what we've got going here I've got the thread tension set right on the money here you can see we have a nice stitch in the back and on the front and just keep in mind now I always mention this when I'm doing a demonstration if your bottom thread okay let me get this let me get this laid out correctly here if your bottom thread is loose as you can see I have a more uh, magenta colored thread here that's in the bobbin case down below that's the bottom thread if your bottom thread is loose it means you need to tighten I have red in the top here coming off my spool in the back there you can see it right back there okay if your bottom magenta colored thread is loose you need to tighten your upper tension because your upper tension is what's going to pull that thread in the back tight so just keep that in mind it never hurts to mention that and that can occur if you don't either you don't have your tension set properly or if you uh, didn't thread your machine properly and get your thread through your upper tension correctly this will cause problems with uh, birds nest underneath and things like that happening it's getting to the point where I have so many videos on the channel now regarding sewing machines that I'm starting to feel like things are a little repetitive here, but let's go over this anyway for those of you that might be new here at the channel. Um, this, is, this is your stitch length right here, this dial right, behind, right above this lever. This is your reverse lever. You just press this down to get the machine to, to move your material backwards and right up here is your upper spool pin you would come through that off your thread stand I've got a little bit better angle on the thread route here you come off the upper spool pin down and candy cane through this thread guide and then you're going to go down on the right here through this thread guide and around the right hand side of the tension discs around like this and then you want to make sure you go beyond this check spring right here so that when you pull on the thread it engages this check spring like this you see that and then you're going to go under this thread guide and then you have to go back up through the take up lever which is right here that's the take up lever the lever that moves up and down then we're going to go back through this guide right here and then we can let me change the camera angle a bit you will just continue down through through this thread guide down there should be another thread guide right here this is removable so this one might be missing don't worry about it go right through this hole right here on the needle bar and then you're going to come on the left hand side of the needle and thread your thread from the left side to the right so your thread is pulling this way towards the post when you're threaded through the needle and then I don't know if you can see this or not but there'll be a scarf a little indentation on the needle it has to be on this side facing this post that way when the hook rotates down below the needle hook will come along here grab the thread and pull it down under these industrial sewing machine needles don't have a flat spot on them they're perfectly round on top so when you install the needle in your machine you have to make sure this scarf this little indentation in the needle is pointing the correct way on this machine it needs to be pointing towards the post or towards the right so if I grab the thread here let me get the presser foot up quickly here when you put your thread when you thread the needle you're going to go from left to right and when you pull it to the right like this you should be pointing right back towards the post of the machine right back this way here's the industrial table for the Juki D1000 
DDL5550. I did uh, power wash the base, the legs of the uh, stand here, and I spray painted them with this uh, Rust Oleum. I get the hammered gray color if anybody's interested. And then I can just show you here this is the the DDL has the aluminum pan with the drain and everything and the gasket. If you buy one of these second hand, kind of inspect this gasket. You can get new ones, but they're going to cost you about 10 bucks. And be careful of this. Uh, this is the, the small lever that pushes up the uh, presser foot on the machine when you use the knee, knee lift. Uh, I actually lost one of those when I bought a machine once. I didn't pay attention where it was and I got home and couldn't find it. So I still have the uh, the thread bobbin winder here I have to attach to the machine. I've got my, my two spool uh, thread stand here. And let me show you one other thing you might be interested in on these machines. If I can get down in here. Take a look at the uh, the label on the machine, the motor speed. This one is a 3450. I actually uh, prefer the the um, 1750, either it's 1750 or 1725. These run a little bit fast on the RPMs for me, but uh, if you're somebody that is used to using a industrial sewing machine, um, this might not be a big deal for you. You might actually want to run that fast if you're trying to do production work. So let's get back up here. I'm going to go in the house and get the machine. And uh, the way we set it on here is I'll just remove these brackets here, put them in the back of the machine and drop the machine in. And then we can work on putting the bobbin winder together. I have the bobbin winder installed and I just have it just so it, the pulley just misses the belt when it's not engaged doesn't have to be on there super tight. If you see this hole right here on the top, that's where you can put a few drops of oil just so this spins freely. It is rubbing on this rubber stop so that you don't get vibration sounds obviously when it's not engaged, but then when it engages it turns over easily. And I just use some of these small screws right here, self-tapping screws to install it onto the table. And uh, I just wanted to mention I do have a cone of thread that I'm going to use, but bear in mind this is not serger thread. Let me zoom in here. It is a Tex 40 thread made for, for garments and things like that. So I'm going to wind up a bobbin and then we'll continue. I have the machine tipped back on the kickstand and I'm noticing that this, this knee lift pusher uh, isn't the correct one for this machine, but I'll just leave it in there uh, temporarily for now until I can order the correct one. I'll have to look that up. But right over here you can see, we try not to cast a shadow in there, you can see the rotary hook right here down below. I'll move it a little bit. And you can see uh, the, the there are no belts on the bottom side of this machine like the old Singer 111W155 had. This is a shaft drive, a geared drive more like a Singer 201 has where it'll drive the uh, the hook assembly with a metal shaft and a gear and there's the oil sump self oiling machine the nice thing about these is the fact that the undersides of these are usually pretty darn clean the metal part sometimes this will be full of like broken needles and thread and all kinds of things that you'll have to clean out and I've already cleaned it up a little bit, but I'm not going to put any oil in here. I've already oiled the machine manually through the top with just a little handheld um, oiler. And uh, yeah, it looks really good. So I'm just going to run a little bit of, I'm going to run a little bit of uh, denim out here in the garage and uh, show you how the clutch motor works. Um, the clutch motors, I have a video on how to open those up and clean the clutch so they engage slowly. This is a 3450 RPM motor on this one, so it is going to be a little bit quicker than the 1750. But let's see what I can do to engage it slowly. I'll get you on the tripod and we'll give it a shot. This is my first time running this since I put it together, so... 
let me tell you, cleaning that clutch motor uh, makes a world of difference uh, for having the ability to sew slowly. And, uh, and I've got the tripod right up next to me, so I'm trying not to bump that while I'm doing this. Let's see if I can come this way. And if, if you didn't notice, I've got threads hanging here. I did go right through all of this. This is the pant leg of some blue jeans. It went through all that without a problem. Now, the knee lift, the hand-controlled knee lift that's on the back of the machine here, right back here, doesn't lift the presser foot all that high. Uh, really, the knee lift is what lifts the uh, presser foot much higher, but I don't have the correct plunger down there to push that up, so I'm just kind of doing what I can do for right now as far as testing this. And uh, I'm still getting used to the angle of the foot pedal. You can change the angle using the linkage going from the foot pedal to the motor. And I've got it set pretty high, but here we go. Okay, I've, I've got pretty good control there. That's really not going any faster than a, a home sewing machine. And I've got a fairly long stitch length too, which makes the material move that much quicker through the machine. So I'm going to just put a little pressure on my reverse lever just to take the pressure off this dial. And then I'm going to, I've got it on a three right now, and then I'm gonna see how slow I can go with this mo clutch motor. And I still am not comfortable with the angle of that foot pedal. I might have to change that. It's a, it's a little bit steep for me. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. That is not, in my mind, that's not really out of control sewing speed there. Let me show you what it can do. I'll just floor it, floor it and see what happens. That's pretty quick. If you're making a long straight stitch, you probably want to be running that fast. But as you can see, it's going through all of this. That's why I commented earlier when we were in the house that this would be a good machine if you were working on denim, multiple layers, because we just went through, at least this is folded over. Well, that's not folded over, that's three layers there. But when we get over here to where they folded that over on itself, we're going through that and that's one, two, three, like five layers I believe and it's going through that with no problem whatsoever a size 16 needle and a Tex 40 thread and there you go we just went through that I just want to get my needle positioned here I'm used to using a knee lift so having to reach around every time there to, to bring that presser foot up I'm gonna try to go slowly now this is what you can accomplish if you clean your clutch. That is a very comfortable sewing speed right there. And I'm getting, getting perfect stitches here. You can see it's nice and tight on the back and on the front. This gray thread almost disappears on this denim. I mean, we can see it, but especially on the dark side here. You can see the thread. This is the fun part of working on the machines. When you've got it to the point where it's just cruising along as smooth as can be. I wish I had the correct lift for that knee lift because I really I really prefer using the knee lift as opposed to the, that little handle back there. 
All right, well, I think that's gonna do, the, do it for this video. Um, like I said, uh, I've got over a hundred other videos on the uh, on YouTube on my channel and I don't plan on quitting working on sewing machines. I've got Molly working on recipes just to kind of keep me familiar with the camera work and the editing and uh, keep the channel going. So hopefully I, I got lucky and got this machine at a reasonable reasonable price. So many of the machines now on on marketplace and just different places where you find them the prices are kind of outrageous for a secondhand machine that uh, doesn't they don't know if it works properly it needs a tune-up and you know you just gotta kind of be careful with the money nowadays so I uh, appreciate you uh, tuning into this video and if you like the video please give a thumbs up a like and subscribe it doesn't subscribing doesn't cost anything obviously and if you Hit the like button uh, it inspires me to make more videos and leave a comment down below uh, with all the videos I have up there a lot of the, uh, the questions people ask will be um, pretty much answered just by watching another one of my videos and what else here yeah I think that's about it all right as always thanks for watching see ya